Hi everyone, welcome to our last week in the course. So, I just wanted to say thank you for all your hard work. Um, to me, this is one of the most fun and rewarding classes. Um, it's also one of the classes that I feel as if I get to know my students on a much deeper and personal level than any of the other classes that I teach here at Post. Um, you know, I just, by the end of this, I, I feel like I, I know you personally, uh, even though most of our communications have just gone through writing. And so I just want to say thank you so much for making it to the end and being so thoughtful in your participations on the discussion boards and in the assignments you submitted. So um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about revision um, so that we can, you know, get ready for that portfolio. Um, also, please note that the due dates this week are different. Um, they are not going to be on Sunday, so please check the week eight, the unit eight section for these specific due dates for the assignments because they are not due on Sunday. Uh, all right, so let's talk about revision. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my, myself in terms of revision uh, to kind of show you why revision is so important and useful. Um, when I first began writing uh, in, in college, which was kind of like the serious time, when I started taking writing seriously, right? Because before then, um, you know, I don't want to bore you, but, you know, I, I wrote my own comic books. I wrote my own stories when I was a little kid. Uh, but I never really t t took it seriously. It was just something that I did for fun. Then when I got to college, I actually started, you know, like, wow, okay, I need to figure out how to do this uh, for real. Um, and so... When I was in college, the brainstorming part of it, like the working things out, the actual writing of it, I, I, was, I was fine with that. The revision part, I was not fine. Um, I had a really bad reaction to revision and editing and proofreading. I just thought, I'm like, oh, I'm above this for some reason. I, don't ask me where I had that that where I got that idea because I was certainly and I'm certainly not above that process. No writer is, um, but I just had a very entitled view when it came to writing in the sense of like, I'm a writer, so I write the first draft and that's the draft. I, again, if I could go back in time, smack, <laughs> smack myself on the back of the head, but I just didn't think it was important. And so I really um, learned the importance of it in a couple, two, two main things. Um, so once I got a paperback from a teacher and it was just blood red. And she wrote at the end, um, you have brilliant ideas in here some of the most interesting things I've ever read in, uh, from a student. However, you are a terrible writer in the sense of like your grammar, your prose, all this stuff. You know, you need to actually proofread this. What are you doing, guy? And so um, it just really kind of like struck me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Like, people care about that? Like, uh, but I'm like... You know, it's like, can't you just look past that uh, sort of, um, you know, those those spelling mistakes or those, you know, comma splices or run-on sentences? Like, wh why, why do I have to fix that? Um, and so that sort of get, got me down the path. And then I just had a peer who was a really dear friend of mine. And he, we, I would give him my stories and be like, look, I'm not going to help you with your writing and give you feedback unless you actually seem like you're putting effort into revising it. I was like, oh, wait a minute, like, okay, okay, like, so people want you to revise your work and, like, you have to do that before you submit it to them? And it just, I just really kind of broke down this attitude over, you know, actually a couple of years and to the point where now when I write, the most of the time is spent on revising. So I'll give you an example. I'm writing a story uh, as we speak right now. And um, my writing process is I brainstorm, I actually write an outline out, I write the thing, and then I revise it. So I wrote something, about 13, 14,000 words, um, cut it down to like two, and now I'm kind of building it back up. 
And so I'm really having to do a lot of things like moving stuff around, cutting stuff out, as you can tell, but you know, losing almost 10,000 words, right? And so it's just a huge process. And so um, I don't want to go on too much, but I just really want to stress how important revision is. Like that story that I was just talking about writing, if I just left it at that 14,000 words, I'm like, okay, well, I, I wrote it. There you go. I'm done. It's It would be totally different, not as good. And honestly, you know, you got to make sure you're revising in order to um, really see if what's on the page is what's in your head. So without further ado, let's talk about what revision is. So here, um, I just wanted to kind of throw out three terms, revision, editing, proofreading. Revision is like what I was talking about where you're rethinking the whole story, like the order of the story. Originally, the story I was talking about, I wrote it as a linear thing. Uh, now I'm kind of doing it kind of out of order with flashbacks, things like that. Um, so you start to think and then you're like, you're like, oh, I don't like this scene. This doesn't make sense. Like, is this the, who the character really is? And so you start deleting and adding stuff. So revision's all about kind of just moving stuff around, right? Um, I kind of always think of it as like this. Like when you move, uh, you put your stuff where you think you want it in the room, right? And maybe you leave it there. Like wherever you put it, like the first day, you leave it there. And then like a month later or so, you start to arrange stuff. And then, you know, years go by and you start moving stuff around, right? And so that's what I think about writing is like, when I first write the story, I just, you know, it's like moving, just throw everything in the corners of the room, right? We'll figure it out later. And then you have that initial arranging stuff and then you've got to keep arranging stuff. Now with revision, to be honest, you could arrange stuff for, for years. That's why if you've ever lived in a house for like five, 10, 20 years, you're always moving around the room because you can see like new arrangements and new ways to put it. And so that's really the same thing about writing is like you can, you'll never stop revising something if you really wanted to. Um, I forget who said it. I think it was Picasso. That doesn't sound right. Uh, but all all work, all art is never finished, it's just abandoned. And really that's true, because you could just revise forever, kind of using my analogy. So anyway, that's revision. You're moving around the things around the room, just trying to figure out where they go. You, you know, when you're writing, you're just putting stuff down. You just gotta, I just gotta get this down on paper. I gotta get it down in this room. I'll figure out where to put it later. And that's what revision is, just moving stuff around, cutting, getting stuff, rid of stuff. Um, and so it's the big picture things, right? Now, when we get into editing, so I think, you know, in terms of a process, all this stuff kind of happens all the time. Like, when I revise, like, I might have the intent to revise, but if I see a sentence that is really kind of funky, uh, you know, I'll edit it, right? Like, I'll look at it for, you know, um, sentence patterns, length, rhythm, um, you know, simple, compound, complex, that sort of thing, making sure that I'm kind of varying those a little bit, um, switching things to passive to active. So one way to, to help you do that, by the way, just as a side note, uh, search your paper for was, um, and that will help you with the passive voice. Um, and if you don't know what that is, I could do a separate post on that if you want me to. Just email me, and if there's enough support for that, I will do a whole thing on it. But anyway, um, so editing would be just like that. And like I said, when I have the intent to revise, I will still edit or proofread. Uh, but I'm not really focused on that actually in the beginning because in revision, since I'm cutting so much stuff and moving stuff around, I really don't care about editing or proofreading as much because I know that sentence might not even be there in a week, right? Or a month. So it's, uh, when I'm first starting revising, I really don't worry about editing or proofreading too much because I know that it's, I might be like fixing up a room in my house that I'm going to get rid of next week or something, right? Uh, but when I feel like I'm done with the story, that's when I really get serious about editing proofreading. So like I said in the chart here, you know, editing is, you know, it's really looking at style, I feel like, you know, looking at word choice, sentence variety, things of that nature. And tone, I, I think that's part of it, you know. Tone is a big part of revision too, like where you might change the tone of a scene. Like I mentioned that story earlier. The, that story, I totally changed the tone. It was very kind of serious, and then I'm like, I gotta lighten this up. 
in the beginning made it uh, funnier, or what I thought was funny. <laughs> uh, and so um, tone can be changed in revision, of course. But I, I kind of think that's part of editing, too, where you might sort of tweak things. Um, proofreading, though, is kind of like the, the last final th run through, right? And so as you can see on my chart, you're looking for grammar, you're looking for mechanics, you're looking for formatting, typos. Um, and I mentioned this before, but one great way to kind of work with proofreading is running it through one of those text to speak type apps where the thing will read it back to you. There's other apps too that are not sort of voice related. Um, Hemingway, I believe it's called, is a good app that I've used in the past. Right now I'm using something called Grammarly. And Grammarly, the reason I use it is, is not only it's pretty good, um, but it's free uh, if you're a post student or teacher like myself. So um, I don't know if this class has the link to the free Grammarly Premium um, because, you know, it's a creative writing class. I don't know if they embedded it. I, I haven't checked. Um, but I can give you the offer code um, if you'd like. Just email me. And by the way, I'm not paid by Grammarly or, you know, the, the, the university pays for it. It's like a service. So in a sense, like, you're, you're paying for it too. Yeah. So um, if you want me to show you how to set that up, I can. Um, so yeah, anyway, that, that's really the difference between the three. And like I said, you're going to kind of do those like where you have different, I always think of it as different hats. So like when I'm working on a story, I might have my revising hat on to start with, but then I might swap it out as I'm going along and it might kind of change. Um, but at the same time, you know, all of these things are really important. And so um, hopefully, and I, and I know this to be true, you are not like the younger version of myself, the young, entitled uh, William Lemon running around uh, campus thinking that he did not need to revise, proofread, or edit anything because he was a writer. Um, and so that's, if you learn anything from this class, the, really the, the big difference between a published author and an unpublished author is 100 drafts. And that's... You know, again, I forget who said that quote, but that's so true that really all a published author is is someone who has taken the time to write many, many versions of their paper or story or poem and that they've proofread it, proofread it, edited it, revised it so many times and they've really honed it. And if you learn that skill, you'll be able to become a very good writer, I believe. All right, well, thank you so much for making it to the end of this uh, um, video with me in this class. And um, I just want to say thank you so much again. And if you ever want to go over your creative writing in the future or where to submit your work in the future, if this is something that interests you, please, please let me know. I know how daunting it can be. When I, I, when I first wanted to start submitting work, I emailed a professor, and she emailed me back basically saying, yeah, getting anything published is really, really hard. And, you know, you probably won't be able to do it uh, for a long time. And that was it. It was no like, oh, here's how to start. Here's how to do this, you know. Um, and by the way, I could do a separate video on that too if you want. Um, but anyway, it, it just wasn't very helpful. And so I don't want you to feel that way. I want you to feel like you have an ally in me and that if you do want to work on this in the future, um, that you can have a sounding board and I could help you um, figure out how and where to submit your work uh, that will be the best place for it to find a home. Okay? All right. Thank you so much again. Talk to you all soon. Bye. Oh, shoot. Uh, sorry. <laughs>